Welcome back and thank you very much for your time. Let's uh, take a look at the front page uh, headline. So it says Daily Guide, uh, Supreme Court cancels Ibrahim Bauxite contract. ADB gives NAFCO 50 million uh, Ghana cities to store food. And uh, suspect admits kidnapping Takradi girls. Namwan still in jail. That's what we read on the front page of the Daily Guide. Business Finder says GCB, ADB, others record huge gains as banking reforms yield positive results. ADB grants NAFCO 50 million for gains, uh, grains patches, and government to train 12,000 entrepreneurs in three years. The Ghanaian Times says will ban manganese export to encourage processing of raw materials locally. President Kufuado, that's what he is promising. Mixed reaction greed suspension of PDS contracts. And uh, Wembley begins work on a new AstroTurf complex. The Daily Graphic. Continue to advance frontiers of justice. U.S. Speaker charges Ghana. And Ms. Nancy Pelosi there yesterday was in Parliament addressing uh, the House. Parliament should expedite passage of Amendment Bill. Haji Ali Mahama is local government minister. ADB supports buffer stock with 50 million uh, Ghana cities loan. And government probes PDS agreement. Extend cubic mining leases invalid. I've been joined this morning by the Acting General Secretary of the Convention People's Party, Mr. James Krabna Bonfe, also known as Kabila. Comrade, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Comrade. Uh, thank how's, you for having me. How's it doing? How's it going? Well, God has been good and we are on course. Mm. Um, as you may be aware, we are in the process of um, carrying out the regional conferences. Mm. Mm. So, uh, the preparations are far advanced and mm. very soon we would be um, conducting the regional conferences to have our regional officers elected right. Right. which would then take us to the national mm. congress mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to elect uh, new officers to steer affairs and possibly um, have a flag bearer for 2020. We are in a kind of a transition mm. process and you, you know right. the right. kind of right. uh, but God has been good and the solidarity of comrades is um, worth commending mm -hmm. and i would want to use your medium to encourage our constituents uh, constituency officers regional officers and the rank and file mm -hmm. of the party mm -hmm. to hold on fast mm -hmm. to the truth that has helped keep the party okay. despite all the attacks mm -hmm. the struggles the intimidations and the deliberate efforts to dismember the Convention People's Party. Mm. For the mere fact that the CPP is alive today mm. is a wonder work of the Almighty God who sowed that seed <coughs> somewhere in Salt Pond mm. some 70 years ago we hear on you. the 12th of June. Okay, we hear you. So the CPP is getting ready. Uh, uh, one would ask, are you ready for 2020 yet? Do you have the wherewithal? We have always been ready mm. at any point mm. in time. For us, it is not just about election. It is also about the life that Ghanaians must live. Mm. That is why consistently we have advocated. And you will see from the theme of the 70th anniversary year-long celebration mm. that we want to build consensus mm. through tolerance mm. and sincerity. Those are the key ingredients missing in our country's development mm. and our discourse. We are quick to look at the negative sides of situations. Mm. But you see... Like uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said at some point, there is some good in the west of us mm. and there is some bad in the best of us. Mm. Which is why we need to tail in the call that the good old Franklin Benjamin said to the uh, Confederate Congress of the United States somewhere in 1887. Mm. Uh, that, you know, they, they, they had to doubt a little bit. Mm in their infallibility no matter how good you are mm. doubt a little bit in your infallibility mm -hmm. it is only when you begin to appreciate that look i could be wrong mm. or he could be right right then you are able to build consensus mm. of course people will give it all kind of names but i tell you fanatism and entrenched positions have never built any nation good Let's uh, go to Parliament now. That's James Kovner Bonfe. He is acting General Secretary of the Convention People's Party. They're 70 already, and they say they're ready for 2020, not just about elections, but about national cohesion and development. But let's go to Parliament. Yesterday, uh, well, 
the uh, agreement and uh, if you like the uh, approval of the 6.3 billion Ghana cities that was requested by the finance minister in parliament take a look at this you said Esla was new science tax Mr. Speaker, Esla, new science. So today, new science tax is being adjusted upward. What we are worried about is its consequence and cost for an already emasculated private sector which is struggling. What it means is that members themselves do not even understand the import of the mid-year review. You are supposed to relate to the target set and in the course of the implementation where we are as a nation. That is it. The fierce and intense defense and dispute over the figures and proposals the finance minister presented to the House on Monday. There were disagreements and name calling. Flagship program of this government, I don't intend to go. One appears successful, three senior high school, with all these challenges. One district, one factory. The minister is quoted here that there is 700 million US dollars. From where? From where? With Exim Bank, state it. Ah, the Minister for Trade and Industry came here and said 400 million dollars. Now, something like that, who should we believe? In the external sector, occasioned the upscaling of the gross international reserves to 9.9 .9 billion, equivalent to 5.1 months of import cover. The speaker, that is unprecedented. That is unprecedented. And anybody should throw a challenge. What we have witnessed under the NPP, that is $9.9 .9 billion of import cap of international, gross international reserves is not known to this country. The speaker, the past 35, 40 years, we have not seen this before. 6.3 billion cities approved by the House. A chunk of it will be pushed into the energy sector as the finance minister laments its bleeding. The Finance Minister declared a state of emergency in the energy sector. I've also been joined by the Honourable Edward Bauer, his MP for Bongo. Honourable, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. Yesterday you? you were in Parliament. I'm fine. Uh, you approved a 6.3, uh, a bigger chunk of which will be used to uh, cure the state of emergency in the energy sector. Uh, how does this come to you? Yeah, uh, good morning to your viewers. And uh, let me specifically greet the people of Bongo and the delegates of Bongo, you know that August 24th, <laughs> they are going to have an assessment of us. Unfortunately for most of us, you'll be assessing a four-year term, you are going to assess me in a two-year term, as a two and a half years, mm. because my primaries are going to be uh, done when basically it right. wouldn't have been right. But I hope and pray that uh, my people will... Uh, well, if you have done a good job, you oh yes, be and that's what it's you shouldn't be strength. scared. <laughs> it's, it's on the strength of that that I know that hmm. my people will uh, will give me an opportunity to campaign okay. again, to contest <laughs> on the like, platform. Of, is smiling. <laughs> yes, on uh, on the ticket of the NDC come 2020. Um, now to the issues mm. at hand. Um, I I realize. I mean, it's it's a constitutional requirement that uh, what do you call it? Uh, the Minister of Finance comes. 91. Yes, mm. come to as it were, uh, give us a, a midterm as, uh, um, assessment of what the budget that we had approved right. and whether we are on track or maybe there are some areas we need to tweak mm. as it were to be able to achieve the overall uh, objectives of the gov uh, government economic policy. Right. And so it was within the confines of those uh, provisions mm. that the finance minister came. Now, the finance minister <coughs> in his conversation uh, a greater part, and I know that the discourse has been centered mainly on, uh, on mostly, mm. not mainly, but mostly on, uh, on the on the energy right. sector, mm -hmm. <coughs> because the minister of finance needed to justify okay. why, for example, there were some the there were three components within mm -hmm. the S. Like you remember that the energy sector levy act mm -hmm. is just a consolidation of various exactly. uh, levies that we had levies. all over mm -hmm. the place, and they mm -hmm. brought them together. Mm -hmm. He needed to justify why we needed to have an increase in these ones. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you recall that in his justification, he said that it was because of some l amount of, uh, what do you call it, uh, indebtedness mm -hmm. within the energy sector mm -hmm. that was almost going to cripple the, uh, right. the, the sector. 
and in his, I mean, he declared a state of emergency as it were within the power sector. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is if you look at the three items that were increased, that there's a three uh, levies that were increased. One was the, the uh, power generation and infrastructure support levy. Mm -hmm. The other one was the price stabilization and recovery levy. Right. And the third one was the root fund. Root fund, right. Mm -hmm. If you look at the three components that have been made, it was only the power generation and the infrastructure uh, uh, support uh, mm. levy that has a direct impact or direct is on the power uh, power subsector. Mm. The road fund doesn't come there. The price stabilization and uh, what do you call it uh, mm. a recovery levy mm -hmm. is quote unquote is something like a subsidy. Mm -hmm. It is supposed to ensure that it curtails the volatility, mm -hmm. the volatility of uh, what do you call it our our petroleum prices because of the fact that there are certain factors that we do not control. Mm -hmm. Now, and the argument they have always made has been the fact that the challenge is not with, the challenge is not with um, 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 tariffs, it's okay. not with all other, I'm getting distracted because... No, it's okay, don't worry, the we'll be fine. Uh, energy ministry man has come and then it's okay. he's, it's okay. he's, he's it's distracting okay. me. It's okay, that's So I'm not able to flow that, very properly. Not, I want the public to know that there's somebody who has come That's not for you to say. Yes. That's, that's uh, for, the public is watching. Please yes. go ahead so, with your views. Now, quick ones. The issue of excess capacity. Mm. And I'm going to address, because there are two main issues. That are excess capacity mm -hmm. and take, a, take or pay mm -hmm. that was bundled around. Let's start with excess capacity. The minister, in his conversation, mm -hmm. and also misleading, in his conversation had quoted... Uh, Energy Commission's mm. figures mm. and said that the installed capacity for Ghana was 5,083 mm. and that the peak demand for Ghana was uh, 2,700. And so, if you look at it, almost 2,000, let's say 2,000 something was supposed to be excess. And that because it was a take or pay agreement, in as much as we were not utilizing this capacity, we were made to pay them. Mm. This was the statement he made. My first point I need to draw, and it's because uh, energy or maybe power sector for that matter, is a technical area. Mm -hmm. So people, sometimes when you make that, you are not able to challenge it. Mm -hmm. Boss, we all use cars, don't we? Mm -hmm. You see that on your speedometer, you have it as 200 mm -hmm. kilometers per hour. That may be the maximum. Mm -hmm. But you, when you really step on the accelerator, and you go, you may not go beyond 160. I know that you are, you mm -hmm. know. So it means that even though the installed capacity of the city on the vehicle, maybe the fact that it is about two, it is supposed to go around 200 mm -hmm. kilometers per hour. What is available for you is about 160. Mm -hmm. I know that you are getting the point I'm making. Oh, yeah. In the same way, the generating mm -hmm. plants, you may have what is the, the plate capacity, and that is the installed capacity. Okay. But the installed capacity is not all the installed capacity is available to you. Akosombo has an installed capacity of about 1,020. Mm. But what is available to us is about 900. Mm. I don't know why you're getting that totally. Get so if you look at the available capacity, available capacity roughly is around 4,000 something. This is about 4,400. Now, if you take, if you have it at about 4,400, mm. and your peak demand is roughly around 2,700, and that figure was right, it's about 2,700. Technically, you are supposed to have a redundancy, mm. and that's the spinning reserve. The spinning reserve mostly is either, other people calculate, some calculate it on equivalent to your largest plant. Mm. And for us, the largest plant would have been Akosombo. Right. So you look at the Akosombo, they say, you know that the available capacity is about 900. Mm. So if you are equivalent to that, and the reason is simple, you see, when you have a plant, if you have the plant, and something goes off, let's say one of the plants go off, mm. it trips and you do not have one, another one that can come in immediately, mm. you have what we call the total shutdown. That's why we always have that total nationwide blackout. Mm. It's because of the fact that you do not have a, a redundancy. But government says, look, we're paying for what we are be not patient, using. Be patient, be patient. It's costing us. No, 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 be patient, be patient. No, be patient. I'm going to make a point. So you need to have that. So you, our largest capacity is a customer. So that would have been 900. So you are taking it from, say, around the 2,000, I don't know, it's about 2,400 mm. excess. You are taking 900 from that. And that would have redundant. So technically, you need to have that. Two, mm. you have a situation where 
if you look at our access in terms of electricity, mm -hmm. we currently have roughly about 20% of Ghanaians who have no access to electricity. Mm -hmm. Per the program, you realize that in the past eight, the, before Kufuor came, eh, sorry, before Akufuor came, mm -hmm. we had about an annual access rate of about 4%. So for about every year, we added about 4% of our population mm -hmm. to hook them to the grid. Okay. And so we felt that over the period, we should have been able to get make sure that by 2020, everybody in Ghana, mm -hmm. per the definition of universality in terms of access to electricity, mm -hmm. everybody should have gotten that. Right. For the past two and a half years, the MPP has only increased access to just about 2. Some, 2 point something percent. So that tells you that basically we have slowed down on that. And these were people who would have tapped into the excess capacity that we are talking about. Mm. So the peak would have been different from what we have. Three, we have Valco. Valco has five port lines. Now, anytime Valco works and works very well, mm. all the industries the downstream industries mm. also work with because they then can provide aluminium for them to use in the various mm. the, and that creates job the you know the, chain. yeah the va va value chain so it creates job we have five port lines and these five port lines each of them uses 75 megawatts mm. as we speak today we have a situation where they are still using one port line even though <laughs> even though government's policy That's, that that is that where, where are you getting that from getting what from the one port line uh, oh i'm coming saying. i'm going to explain to you because, no, we, we, don't I, because have, we don't have all day yes because, because your, i have your that other, because your colleague we separate with with as mines and energy committee we pretend over the activities of alcohol okay now you have a situation where government's own policy had indicated that they were going to dedicate mm. the hydro component to these high energy consuming industries mm. the last time valco came to us they had indicated to us that they were still using one port line and the other port line was being prepared for. So as we speak now, they are not. Okay. So that's the point. Mm. So let's mm. say that. So and you they need told you this in Parliament? Parliament. Mm. Now, let me make my third point. Oh, no, you have time to that, come. That, and that's we'll your deal fourth with point, actually. Okay, what, 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 four <laughs> or five. No, I'm just trying to give you right. that. Now you have the last one. You realize, re you recall that the president had indicated that Ghana was now a net exporter of power. That was the reason why he made that mm. statement. If you look at VRS financials mm. for 2017 and 2018, VRA had made more revenue in terms of revenue, had increased in revenue as compared to 2017 mm. because, not because of tariffs that they had gotten, but because of exports. Mm. They had exported about 100 megawatts of money just to Burkina Faso alone. If you look at the schedule that had been put, that brought uh, AFD mm. to Ghana, to support the upgrade of the transmission line from Pristia through uh, Bolgatanga to, the, to upgrade it from 161 to 360 okay. was to ensure that we would be exporting power. Okay. Per the schedule. I'm going to be No, no, step down for me. Yes. You have, you have, you no, have had enough time. No, no. Per the schedule. You have, you have had no, enough time. Let me just conclude this. Conclude. On the, why would I leave yeah. it hanging? Conclude. Per the schedule, mm. as today, mm. we should have been exporting no less than 400 megawatts to our sub region. They say our power is relatively much more expensive compared to what's in that sub region. The question then you ask is that they should give us the figures. And that is why Burkina Faso, as we speak now, Burkina Faso was supposed to have gotten, Niger should have been sorted out by now, and then Mali. And we should have been exporting about now, uh, 400. So if the president says that we are net exporter it, there's a reason why he said that mm. it's because if you look at vra even though tariffs had been reduced mm. as compared to the uh, 2015 tariff levels vra still made a lot of money mm. not because of domestic uh, uh financial uh, what do you call uh, uh, revenues mm. but because of foreign exchange that we got okay james but maybe we'll come to the tech or pay we'll, we'll come, we'll come to it okay. uh, i'm sure the issues flowing out of the pds ecg deal as well will will take center stage but james uh your thoughts about about this uh, subject matter the finance minister went to parliament went to ask for 6.3 and uh, let me quickly introduce nana damwa nana damwa speaks uh, for the energy ministry nana welcome good morning Thank you very how much. you doing my brother great great james take your bite quickly and then let's jump on uh,
uh, it does appear that Mr. Bauer has uh, left Parliament already and is talking about the energy issues. But the, the question I tabled, and that's some yeah. good information he put, but the question I tabled was that the 6.3 has been approved, and we're learning that a bigger chunk of that amount will be used for the energy sector. Uh, it didn't come uh, without a name calling and uh, accusation and all the issues. So maybe you talk briefly about it, and then we can get into the energy issues. Well, I mean, f um, I have seen highlights of the budget. Mm. Um, the theme is a, um, a solid one. Mm. Um, and I think that it should be lived. You see, when you say you want um, to focus on job creation that will engender prosperity mm. among your people, that is the overall mm. or if you like the mm. objective a stronger economy a stronger that economy will, uh, that will growth and prosperity mm. yeah but, but there's that, a job there's a job there's a job, job, yes. a job component there mm. and i'm saying that there are things that feed into that mm. the things that feed into that already the indications are that we have macroeconomic stability mm. some of some sort but as the tuc secretary general said dr yauba admonished it must translate into the micro. Mm. It must translate into the general dealings of our country. Mm. And I think one of the ways that government must work at is to expand the frontiers mm. of revenue mobilization in this country. And one of the best ways to do that is to make sure that every transaction in this country goes through a banking system. Unfortunately, mm. it is difficult to open a bank account in this country even for organizations. But mobile money has made it easier for people to move money around. Should it's, government it, be taxing it, mobile it, money? It is, it is true, but mm. mobile money is taxed. Mm. Oh, you don't know that. Mm. Every transaction, and I do that quite, mm. every transaction that you do takes, there's a deduction. That's, that's a service charge. It's a service charge, mm. and that service charge, there's a tax component on it. Right. Parliament, I mean, mm. uh, there's mm. an MP mm. here, and you would know that. But I'm saying, even that is not a proper banking system. Okay. That's mobile money. It shows you how easy it should be to allow money to go through banking systems. Mm -hmm. And that will help us to remove uh, you know, the flow of cash in the system and allow a cashless system. Mm -hmm. If we do that, we will expand the number of people who pay taxes in this country so that we don't overburden the few people who are always, always paying taxes in this we country. talk about informal sector? Informal, formal, whatever. Yeah. Every sector. I'm saying that the farmer... Okay. Whether you call him informal or formal, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an issue of nomenclature. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, if the money mm -hmm. or financial transactions of his mm -hmm. go through a banking system, through an ID system, that's why we must take the national identification exercise seriously. Mm -hmm. If it is network that you have a card, you have an identity that is linked to financial transaction, mm -hmm. and you pay with uh, through electronic means and all those things, that will happen. You see... There's something that happened that I think is both a plus and a minus for this okay. government. The withdrawal of the luxury, luxury vehicle vehicles yeah. tax. You see? Yes. And the narrative is that government is listening. Are they not listening? Well, ha did they listen at first? It's not as if the, the complaints about the luxury taxes came only after uh, the, it had been you know, implemented. Mm. At the inception... Questions were raised mm. about the intentment of it and why it was. You see, it, it, and, and for me, what the government should take from that is that there are many things that they may be doing that they feel so convinced about. When people raise flags, mm. they should take their time and listen. L like what? Free SHS, one district, I've one factory, I've not one mentioned. village, one dam. Free Those SHS, are the that the government free SHS doing. is a must. Okay. I support it. Okay. Even if it was to go to the investing level, we should do so what things this are government country. doing that may I not I said be there may be things. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious to learn from you. Yes, but you don't have all the, as you said. Yes, but, but can I'm you, saying can you that, I'm saying that, that? Mm -hmm. I'm saying that what has happened with the luxury tax that has been withdrawn, okay. which was flagged in the early days, mm -hmm. and government has not come to the realization that, no, we have to listen to what the people are saying, and they've done that. I'm saying that. There may be other things like co that you could be, communication, that you, and I'll sorry, tell you, uh, wait, wait. People the are communication, about it. The communication tax, for example, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you this. 
maybe because of my little experience from my uh, undergraduate studies in the, uh, I mean, through computer science. Right. The information, we live in an information age. Mm. The biggest and ever growing industry will remain the communication industry. All, always, all over. Check it, the statistics. Mm. The, imp the, the problem with this uh, uh, communication tax that has implemented mm. is that it is going to be passed on to the consumer, you and I. Whereas the telcos, mm. the big uh, telephony mm. companies that are in this country, will take advantage of it and rip us the more. I'm telling you this. Look, if you want to check how much revenues are generated within the, uh, the telephony industry annually mm. and how much they pay to government as taxes mm. and what government is getting from that industry, we need to restructure the tax arrangement within the communication industry. Okay. That the people who are raking so much money, and I'll tell you the, much of the problem we have with our currency challenges, mm. is coming from the telephony. None of them is owned by Ghanaians. They make money, they convert them into dollars, and repatriate, abusing our own laws with the connivance of our immigration officers at the ports. This is a fact. Ask yourself. So it keeps weakening our currency. It keeps weakening our currency. Look, if government will rethink the communication industry alone, and I want to encourage the minister, Madam Eslawusu, mm. Mrs. Uh, uh, Esla, uh, Usu, uh, Kufu, mm. Mrs. Sorry for uh, uh, mm. calling her uh, premarital name. But whatever, they should, they should refocus the communication industry and rethink that these companies which have been ripping us off would begin to give back to society. Right. Through appropriate tax regimes, okay, and uh, uh, um, I, I want to say this: that at the end of the day, the arguments about the energy, which we would come to, will come to shortly. I am happy that the government said they will really look, or they are going to invest more into the one D one F mm. thing. Mm. It's the way to go. Coming from the CPP, we endorse it because it is an endorsement of something or something for, and the CPP did in the first regime, which governments, including their uh, uh, predecessors mm. okay collapsed a lot of the industries mm. if we are going to create these industries what it means is that we are going to require more energy okay so i don't know how we are balancing the argument about excess energy mm. or beyond our need today okay and the vision of creating more factories, more industries, mm. which are going to require energy anyways. Right. The factories will need you, them. Yeah, I'll tell you. Because you can't Private run without Private sector will need them. You, you can't run without power. Break and, and, and I want to say this. I want to say this. You see, my friends from the NDC, sometimes they, they... What we need to know is that a lot of the energy investments mm. were done in a crisis situation. Okay. And in doing things in crisis situation, you are likely to have made some mistakes in the haste to want to quicken to solve a problem. So I say, and that's why I keep saying that we need to listen to each other. There's a way maybe we can renegotiate some of these arrangements mm. to our profit better than they were initially arranged. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. So going by the principle that we could be wrong, mm. we should all accept that, okay, <laughs> you're saying some point, you're saying something very useful here. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it. Okay, I'm also have thinking about it this way. How can we reconcile the two Find a and ground. make and make the best out of the situation? Mm -hmm. For me, a lot of the time the we are opposed to you because we belong to your the other side. It hasn't helped build Is it, is it all because of political capital? Well, political capital is best secured when you are progressing with your people. Okay. Political capital that ends up in just power acquisition is useless. Thank you. And that's what we have been doing under this fourth Republican dispensation. Instead of building a nation, we are capturing power. Thank you. Nana, yes, sir. the parliament approved 6.3 for your government. Uh, that's good news. But is it going to be the, the salvation we have been looking for, at least for 2019? Already you have made uh, some 6.7% of the target of 7.6% uh, that you, you plan for GDP, 6.0% for uh, non-oil uh, GDP. You're, you're, the figures look good, but the people are looking for how 
issues in their pocket, in their daily lives when they go to the pump and all of that. Will this approval of 6.3 be the salvation we're looking for? Okay, thank you for this opportunity and I'm grateful that I'm here this morning. Um, I've heard quite a lot of commentary this morning about um, what should have been done, what the plan was among others. And I think that it's very beneficial that we zoom into the matters and discuss them accurately. My only regret is that perhaps due to a three-man panel that we have this morning, mm. we may not be able to have enough time to exhaustively deal mm. with all of the issues that have been raised. I would immediately launch into um, the matters that have been discussed as pertains specifically to energy. Okay. Now, Mr. Bao, you know very well as much as I do. If that you invite me into the conversation, I'll come in. No, no, no. So uh, you, he, allow him to make his uh, <laughs> comments, and and then you please note them. That's why you have a paper and a pen, Mr. Bar. No, no, I'm just saying. Sorry, to sorry. That. Please, uh, you have a paper and a pen. Inviting me, I'll talk. Please note. So once he invites you, note his concern, <laughs> and then you can have chance to reply. No, no, okay, please. Yeah. If you had allowed me to finish, you would have known that all I was saying was that your definition of rural electrification that is universal access to electrification mm. is wrong. You know very well that it is accepted at 90%, that when a country reaches 90%, it can be said to have achieved universal mm. access to electricity. Okay. But dealing with the matters, he also sought to create the impression that installed capacity and um, available capacity are different, which is true. But the question is, when we are charging for capacity, okay. the capacity charges, are they charged? On available capacity or they are charged on installed capacity mm. that is the government of the matter that we are right. dealing with that is the issue that we seek to deal with mm. as we speak valco has started a second portland and let's deal with the issues again let's be frank with ourselves in the 2012 manifesto of the ndc mm. they told us that they were going to increase our installed capacity to 5,000 megawatts in mm. 2012 mm. in 2012 yes. question at that time, we were below 2,000 megawatts mm. at peak in Ghana. What was your plan? What was your strategy for bringing these extra almost 3,000 megawatts on stream, mm. knowing very well that we're going to have to pay capacity charges mm. for these plans that we're going to bring on stream? Now that this issue has come, they're telling us that oh, we should start Valco. Listen, Valco, as we speak, is now operating two port lines, but there's a problem. What's the problem? The electricity we are giving them is too expensive that makes them uncompetitive. Mm -hmm. The issue, therefore, is that if you have to go ahead and give them all of it, we are going to be incurring extra losses because mm -hmm. to be able to run a smelter like that, you need cheap electricity. Mm -hmm. And the current pricing of electricity doesn't just allow for that kind of thing that we are doing. Mm -hmm. Government has taken a very bold decision to even open the second port line. And the second port line, as we speak, I have been there, I have seen it, is working. It is. Now, it is working. So Call the workers of VACO. So why, why would, why would the, parliament, the parliamentary committee say? That's what he's saying, and I would want you to, but I am saying that okay. I have been there. I have and pictures, you've seen it working. I have seen it working. Okay. I have pictures that I can show okay. to the effect that the second port line when, in VACO. When, when did you see this? When did you go to, to VACO to see this? Less than a month ago. Less than a month yes. ago. Yes. Okay. And it can be verified okay. that indeed the second port line is working. Okay. This government took the bold decision mm. to operate that second port line port line right. and we are dealing with it Make now progress. in 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 trying to deal with these issues they are not saying that we can export good point let's assume that we can export now you are saying that we were supposed to be exporting 400 megawatts right by today. we have no problem by today 400 megawatts by today mm. but what's the def what's the excess capacity that we have take away 400 megawatts from it we will still have a huge headache right Assuming that we're able to come up with all the expenditures for mm. infrastructure mm. to enable us to export 400 megawatts, as he's saying, we will still have over a thousand megawatts in excess capacity. Let, let me put a, a question to you now. So, you have a plan to set up factories, one district, one factory, like Abila said. Uh, do we have a power plan for these factories that will Yes, come we up? do. Ma let's avert our minds to something. All the industries that we've built in this country. Mm from the inception of this country till now, let's even say from the colonial era till now, okay. has led to us consuming 2,700 megawatts today. Okay. Despite all the heavy industries, all the big industries, all the things that we are doing. And I know that Kabila is giving you questions to ask me, but in any case, <laughs> no, what no, I want no, no. to no, no. Then I, let's read what is there. No, no, no. Then no, 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 then, yeah. then let's read what is there. This is a private message no, I'm to just me. Saying, no, 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 no. You, you, you can read it. It's a private message. I don't message. think that you need no, to read no, my back. Just message. allow me. No, no, it's a private message. No problem, but just allow me. I think that I think you're being unfair to me. Just allow me. You're being unfair to me. Just allow me. Just allow me. 
And I'm saying that. Oh, oh, oh. I'm asking myself. <laughs> the heckling well, is becoming too much. Who is heckling you? It's all right. No, no, Kabila. Kabila, it's all right. Then may I finish? Nana, 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 Nana. No problem. Let me spill the first. Nana, may I finish? Nana, Nana, may I finish? Nana. It's, it's unfair do to say that he's giving me questions to ask. That, do that. that makes that makes do that. that makes the public think do I am incapable do that. of no, thinking no, of my no, own questions. No, and I think that you need to withdraw that. No, no. I have done that. If that's going to be the issue, I have done that. Let's that will be an issue. to defend the independence. Let's let's make for gentlemen, 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 please, gentlemen, please. No, no, make progress. Thank you very much. Now, I'm saying that all the industries that we are operating in this country, from the very inception, from the colonial days till now, has led to Ghana consuming 2,700 megawatts at peak. Mm. Mm. I don't know how they expect that the bringing up of these, in, and again, let's imagine that a government that has a four-year term mm -hmm. could even from day one, all of a sudden, set up 216 factories across the length and breadth of this country from a, day one. A promise made? It's a four-year term, and that's what you, we need to keep We're in, in our in, third in, year. In, no problem at all. What I'm saying is that that's what we need to keep in mind. Okay. That assuming mm -hmm. that this government could come and all of a sudden, we could just find 216 factories coming on stream mm -hmm. at once. Mm -hmm. What would have been the energy consumption of these factories? Remember that these factories were clearly defined. Okay. So all of these arguments still do not make up mm. for the huge excess capacity that was contracted. What they need to do is tell us what the strategy was mm. right from 2012 mm. when they began to contract these capacities. At least in 2012, they stated the vision clearly mm. that we intend to go for 5,000 megawatts. Question is why? Globally accepted standards for mm. excess capacity mm. because as you are producing power, anything can happen to a machine. Okay. It's twenty percent at our current peak of five. Uh, uh, sorry, two thousand seven hundred megawatts. What you find is that we need just about five hundred and forty megawatts of excess capacity. Mm. Your export argument doesn't hold water because why doesn't it hold water? Can here's my sell? argument. One, we are not competitive to sell. We are not competitive to sell. In 2016, the NDC was importing power from Cote d'Ivoire at a certain point in time because it was less expensive than buying fuel to power our generating plants mm. in this country. So they themselves at a point in time were importing power. So if you knew that these were the kinds of capacity that you were contracting at this price, mm. how do you expect us to sell that power? Who is going to buy? Secondly, secondly, what measures were put in place if you knew from 20 and i've established one thing mm. from 2012 you knew that you're going to contract 5,000 megawatts and as you are saying you were trying to export mm. what infrastructure did you build towards export over the four years of governance remember that the wagadugu line was finished under this administration okay now, Quick, now quickly if, if no, i may no if I may, wrap up if and, I may. and answer my question you have not answered my question up to this point <laughs> government ha, uh, parliament has approved the 6.3 additional you, but, funds but I think is that, that, that a salvation you have dealt i think you have dealt <coughs> with a lot of preliminary issues no you now see, talk to me answer my question so that we can move on and talk about the pds ecg deal the government, matters arising quickly the government of the day mm. has done its financial estimates and realized that we need to make some changes the minister of finance was mm. very clear in his submissions to parliament in saying that listen we know that there are challenges. Mm -hmm. This is not the all in all, mm -hmm. but this is going to go a long way in solving the problems of the people of this country. It was even very definitive in saying that, listen, we are going to solve the problems, not in pictures, mm -hmm. but in real terms, with these projects actually existing in your communities for you to see and have the benefits of them. How much of this the is, money are we is, using for the energy is, sector? This is, this is, Give this us is, a figure. How much is, of the money are we is, using this for is, the energy this is, sector? This is what I'm going to say to the people of Ghana. Mm. We unfortunately have found ourselves in a situation where those that created the problem mm. are now coming out to say that, oh, you should have done some other things to help save this problem. They are running away from this issue of take or pay uh, contracts that they have signed. Mm. What is instructive is that they have not denied the fact that yes indeed they signed these take or pay arrangements and that secondly mm. they those take or pay arrangements are responsible 
for the very heavy financial burdens that we've brought to bear on our people. How much let of me that just, money, let me just the 6.3, are we just, using let me to just, solve let the let energy just, Let me just home in on, on a point for you. Now, the $500 million or thereabout mm. that is being spent every year, roughly, using an exchange rate of even five CDs mm. for, to a dollar, amounts to 2.5 billion Ghana CDs mm. this year alone. <laughs> in September, when the three streams come onto the free SHS model, mm. government is going to have to spend 1.32 billion. Mm. Now, that should tell you the extent of the wastage that we are seeing. The interesting thing is that... You have to answer done. my question on how much of the 6.3 you, you are me, going to know. We don't have a lot I of time. Agree, but you see, so you answer that so that... So that if, no, no. So if no, no you, to, you have had you, a lot of time. No, no, answer my, answer if, my question. If I insist We're that closing at 8 p.m. I insist that if so, you allow me... So answer my question. 8 a.m. I beg your pardon. You also need to allow me to make my point. you have had a lot of time. I agree. And I have restrained them. He asked you to let him land. So you can also let me land on Let me put my question so you can land on that. My okay. question is, how much of the 6.3 billion approved by Parliament yesterday are you going to spend in solving the energy sector problems? Now, I'll go back to the point I was making, mm. and which I asked you to let me land, which is that after you have gone to s contract mm -hmm. uh, capacities that ensure that we are going to be spending 2.5 billion you, every you year. You made that point already. If, if you let me land, mm. I, I beg you, every year, mm. This is money that at the end of the day will not have even a pen to show for. That's the reality. When it comes to a decision-making point, what the people of Ghana understand is that one government chose to spend their monies in educating the people of this country. Another government mm. chose to contract in a manner How that gives away... How much of the 6.3 are you spending to solve energy problems? Another government... Don't tell me about free SHS if, when I'm if, asking if, about energy. If, if you'd allow me to land, because no. you allowed them... You are to not ready to land. I am ready to land. But <laughs> How you, much of the 6.3 billion are we spending you on allowed to solving... You've allowed to make submissions. No. So don't go back to tell so me, let me finish. who spends 500, who is spending money you to educate to, people. You need to... 6.3 billion has been to, approved to, by to, Parliament. You need How to, much of that that money is being spent to solve the energy problems which the finance minister said we are in a state of emergency you will allow is that me too hard it's not but so tell me you are not also mm, being fair to me in dictating and cutting me short i'm on a narrative so if you allow me to finish my narrative i do not see the point of, of discomfort here. If you allow me, if I'd allowed me there's, to finish there's my no narrative, discomfort. so then let You're, me finish. You keep going back i'm not going back i'm making my point okay you, you have 30 seconds. Thank you. Thank you. One government at the end of the day chose to spend <laughs> <laughs> 2.5 billion mm. with nothing to show for it, not even a pen. Okay. Another government at the end of the day decided that, look, we are going to con <laughs> uh, <laughs> give that amount of money, half of that, to educate the entirety of the population okay. in this country. And today we are seeing the benefits. Mm. The interesting thing is that they are now the ones coming to say okay. we are wasting money. 30 seconds up, Thank grateful. You. And <laughs> my question remains unanswered <laughs> as to how much will be spent by the government of the day in solving our uh, uh, energy problem. 6.3 has been approved by parliament. We don't know how much of it is going to be used to solve the energy problems. But uh, Mr. Bauer, let me come to you quickly. Just uh, for rebuttal, let, let's because I was invited into the No, but so I will put your question to you and I'll give you a time if you want to spend it on rebuttals. That's fine. Oh. Uh, PDS, <laughs> ECG, because we're, we're hitting the top of the hour shortly. Okay. PDS, ECG issues have come up. Kojo Poku is, for example, saying that uh, the finance minister must lose his job because... Kojo Poku is Safwa. Yes, yes, mm. Safwa. He says that the finance minister must lose his job and that the fact that we're going to lose some $190 million mm. uh, because of this. Mm. Uh, the Minister for Energy says that uh, the gentleman official who signed this off has been suspended. Yes. And uh, these are the issues coming up at this point, the back and forth. Where do we go from here? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, how many minutes do I have? Uh, can I give you five? Five minutes, That's okay. Fine. I just use a minute to do something and do four minutes with this. Quick one. If you look at the current tariff that was announced, mm. and you look at how it was calculated, mm -hmm. it was calculated based on the fact that all available capacity was inputted as part of the ingredients to give you your tariff. Mm. So what it simply means is that today, if you go to buy electricity, the supposed quote-unquote excess power mm. has been calculated into it, so you That's pay for it. Mm. That's the first point. That's not true. Second point that I need to make. 
Mm. Government's own policy, and my brother must go back and read his, the, his finance minister's own, what do you call it, policy statement, uh, economic policy statement to parliament. Okay. As a matter of government policy, which is a continuation of the last one, mm. is that they were supposed to dedicate hydro to Valco and other industries. Mm. And the reason is simple. It fits into the original plan of Asajifo, which was basically that because it is cheaper to produce that, mm. Because it is, uh, the ingredient you need is just water. water. It, it's cheaper to produce that. You could use that to bring down tariffs, make the port lines work, mm. and create jobs. So I just want to tell you, so when he talks about expensive nature, mm. government's own policy is that they need to give that to them. So that's the other point. My third point, when he talks about capacity charge, mm. there's no TPA on this F, including B, that was signed under them. Mm. Asugli, that was signed under them. That capacity charges are not put because capacity charges takes care of the cost of the infrastructure you have put in place. Mm. Two, the two projects I've mentioned, Bui and then Asogli, okay. were all under take or pay. Mm. So he should put that at the back of his mind. So it is not a new creature, a new animal mm. that was introduced within the power sector in this country. Mm. But now I'll go to PDS because there are other things I wanted to talk about. But I will leave them because I realize that we were moving and then there's a, a scandal that we need to address. My brother, you recall that in the course of our power generation challenges that we had in this country, mm. it was detected after some stress analysis that if you look at the three functional zones of the power subsector, okay. the distribution sector was the weakest link because of the level of losses, Obsolete equipment mm -hmm. and what have you. So, for example, a VRA produced power and Gridco transmitted it to uh, uh, what's the name? ECG mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a bulk uh, mm -hmm. consumer Commodity. to distribute. They could not account for the power that they took, mm -hmm. either through technical losses or commercial losses. Right. And so, as part of the efforts, when Ghana uh, qualified to go into the Compa 2, with the, uh, with the hope of the fact that we're going to get around yeah. roughly around $500 million. It was that, as part of the conditions to assess that, we needed to leverage on okay. private sector equity and private sector, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. That's how the whole animal called PDS came into being. I'm just, just trying to give a background right. to that. Now, if you look at the concession that was brought to Parliament... You have two minutes more. Yeah, if you look at the concession that was brought to Parliament... Our understanding clearly was that there were certain conditions that needed to be met before the uh, the the the, 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 uh, the agreement will be signed. Right. Conditions precedent. Condi they, they are known as condition precedent. Twenty nine of them had been met. Sixteen were outstanding. Out of the out, and that was what delayed. You remember that initially the whole thing was supposed to be in February, mm. but we finally sent it to September and signed in September, mm. and then it took off in March first, if mm. you recall. Mm. One of the critical ones had to do with the fact that they needed to provide us with a guarantee that suggested capitalization. Mm. Two, they needed, as part of the five years, demonstrate that they could give a pump $580 million mm. within five years. Because of two years, I'm just quick, quick we're, running. We're told that they, they brought our insurance bonds instead of... Uh, yeah. Yes, so that's, uh, that's why I'm just running quickly mm. on this. If you look at w this critical condition precedent that had to do with in terms of giving us the BAC uh, payment security mm. and then the, the lease payment securities, mm. which were supposed to demonstrate capitalization, okay. they never did. They failed to do it. We drew the attention mm. of, uh, what do you call it, the government, mm. because it was Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Energy that came to Parliament. Mm. That look, this was a critical thing because you were handing over an 18 billion CD worth of asset mm -hmm. to somebody without any proof of capitalization. Remember that I had told you that the very reason why we decided to bring private sector mm -hmm. was because of equity, money, mm -hmm. and because of expertise. We realized that that was it. Two, the 51% shareholding that was the local content component, mm -hmm. they had not demonstrated. One, other financial competence. Okay. Or two, technical competence. Mm -hmm. Because these were companies that hitherto had never even played a role in the power sector, not to talk of energy. So why did we give them the assets? So it was yet another issue that we made, the 51%. Did we have another choice? 
The other choice was to say that we were not going to do it. it you were not under gunpoint to sign the contract. You were not under gunpoint. Then suddenly, mm -hmm. we come to realize that even in terms of the insurers, those who were supposed to be uh, okay, insured, I give. Oh no, yeah, but you, it is interesting it's not, that no, I raised no, 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 them. Wrap up for me. Let, let me wrap should up. The you know that, should the finance minister go? Yes, and I tell you why the finance should, minister must go. go. I tell you why the finance minister must go. Look, take down one of the insurers for this particular project was Danwell. Danwell is worth, if you look at their total capital, it's about 50 million. Mm. And in the insurance arrangement, they were insuring about 300 million Ghana cities worth of the assets of uh, ECG. Mm. How was that going to be possible? So if you look at all these things, and government now comes to tell you that based on due diligence, I know that they were going to do further due diligence because they realized that if you look at the guarantee that was procured from Qatar, mm. it was fraudulently pro procured. And it took us five months okay. to get this. Should it clearly tells you go? that not only the finance minister, oh. I think that even the whole board and then the management of MIDA, mm. which has his office at the Flagstaff House, everybody must step aside. Criminal prosecutions? There must be a parliamentary yeah. probe, public, for us to see what went wrong. Mm. Let's establish the facts because this is a, a developing story. Okay. And that on the basis of that, mm. we will see how. But, you, definitely, I agree with you that the finance minister mm. must no, step I, aside. I didn't say that. It's no, I say I agree with. I agree that mm. the finance minister must se step okay. aside. Okay. And then the management and the board of what called media, media. must okay. also step Thank aside. Uh, James, take take a bite on this. Uh, they are asking for Why criminal prosecution as well. Government says it started an inquiry into it, and Kojo says government should stop telling lies about the fact that it is their due diligence that has brought this to the fore. In fact, it was a Qatari uh, company that drew government's attention to the US. fact that uh, this is there's a rot and some level of fraud in this because fraudulent documents were presented to uh, land this agreement. What do you think? This is the back and forth that we have had to deal with uh, not so long ago. This is Ghana, and this is a country with laws. Mm. And there are laws regarding contractual agreements and arrangements. If you go into a contract with uh, false claims, it vitiates all the obligations that are contained in that mm. agreement. Mm. And I'm not surprised that government has suspended <laughs> the operations. Is it the operations or the contract? The contract has been suspended. The contract has been suspended. So ECG is now in charge again. There will be remedial clauses in that contract, uh, contractual agreement mm. that government can rely on to seek redress. We're told that we, we, we may lose some $190 million. Why and how would we lose that? To whom? Are we going to lose that amount of money? Mm. If indeed we were lied to, how would we? How are we likely to lose that? I want an explanation. There were forty-one that. conditionalities uh, that were presented to the Mines and Energy Committee. I'm told, uh, committee. I'm told, uh, but by the time we went to cabinet and came back, some had been taken and made uh, conditions, conditions subsequent. subsequent. They were supposed to be have been preconditions, but when they went to cabinet so, and came back, then they so at, at the end of the what? No, but they, they, that is a different mm. matter. The that, that, this, this from the mines and energy. Yes, company. and I'm saying wow. that you see, lo the money we will lose mm. is a subject separate from the um, order okay. in which the contractual clauses or terms okay. were agreed upon. The fraudulent documents were that so, we so told were I understand. to land So deal. let's deal with the claim of losing money. Okay, and I'm saying that why would we lose that amount of money mm. if we were the ones who suffered? Okay. Um, false claims or uh, false attributions mm -hmm. on the part of whoever we engage in. I don't see how that, that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. If I have been lied to and I have right and uh, uh, remedies mm -hmm. to seek, I don't see how I should rather suffer um, a penalty as you are saying. It doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to me unless it's explained further. But with respect to the, the terms okay. that were agreed upon, mm -hmm. We are certainly going to demand answers from those who exercise oversight. They were told that, that the official has been suspended at the ministry. Absolutely. But who, the, the mm. bad... Mm. Nobody has been suspended. The official is not from the ministry. It's okay. an court official. Is that, okay, sure. So 
I, I, I hope you give me a little bit right. more time you're, to you're, explain you're, those you're, matters. Yeah. So whatever, whatever the details but are. But I that the minister says somebody has been a suspect. Whatever, 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 whatever the details are, you see, uh, this is presenting us an opportunity to appreciate that we need to be very diligent as a country. We are not. Look, what is happening is telling you that perhaps we could have been more diligent than we were. Mm. That's what I'm saying. And I'm sure that there are other instances that eventually if we are carefully mm -hmm. and uh, we are careful about things mm -hmm. and we look at them strictly, we will appreciate that perhaps we could have done better than what we've done. Mm -hmm. it, there's no need to rush in a haste okay. to do some of the things that we do in this country merely for political gain. And I said, power capture, power capture. Mm -hmm. Power capture creates a certain force you know, impression in your mind and, 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 and allow you to go for... Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, the government had uh, good intentions, didn't they? Absolutely. But I'm saying that we're no, notwithstanding, notwithstanding your good intentions, you need to be more diligent. Mm. But, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, okay. I want to be positive about this and say that we should learn lessons. Okay. Thank you. We should not... Mm overstretch this right that's the warning i want to give okay. that yes some issues have been you should stop pointing accusing fingers that what i'm saying is okay. that don't overstretch it okay if it is me it is james kwabna bonfe jr let's deal with james kwabna bonfe jr and stop what we normally do in this country okay. if alfred has been found to be involved with something mm. we spread it to attack everybody at TV3. Okay. That lumping and stereotyping is negative. We, we should stop we it. Should, we should deal with the issues. It. Yes, deal with the issues. Okay. And let us name and shame and stop this, I mean, stereotyping and lumping people okay. together as if they are homogeneous uh, uh, zombies. Okay. Nana, <laughs> I know you are itching too. Yeah, I, I, I just want to know how much but time I have because it's already... No, you long. have time. Aisha, Aisha, is, uh, okay. Aisha is here with some of your messages quickly. And then you have your five minutes as well. Thank and you. Went quickly. Uh, and, uh, mm. Okay. Aisha, okay. Let's, let's go. Uh, hi, Johnny. So we'll start off from uh, Yamoha for Mua. He says, very in interesting times with this clueless government. If we have excess capacity of power, why then extend the contract agreement with car power from 10 to 20 years? This government thinks Ghanaians are fools and can't think through what they are telling us. The NP uh, this one also says, the NPP man seems to be making more sense Though he failed to answer a very important question from the host. It's unfortunate on his part. CT uh, Staker sent that one from Accra. Adam from Hacho says, NPP communicators and Nana Damo in particular are serial liars. They keep lying to Ghanaians even in government. Here we are today with PDS embarrassment because of someone's gross incompetence. Uh, this one says, this government on a daily basis has shown gross incompetency when it comes to the management of our country. Ghanaians should kick them out come 2020. It's coming from Osman uh, from Tamale. This one says, uh, Nanado and the NPP have deceived Ghanaians with their promises. They'll be voted out come 2020. Good morning. Ray from Wa sent that one to us. Uh, please, uh, na, na, just mention one picture that was in the green book that was not real and tell us the location that was purported to have been cited. It is true that uh, when the debate is lost, slander becomes the weapon of the defender. Stop accusing the host. Um, from Yendi, Adam Harlett sent this one to us. Johnny, the difficult work in Ghana now is being an MPP communicator. You have to lie your way out without speaking to the issues. Uh, good morning to your panelists. Hmm, Nana is confused uh, on what to say. I'm not a politician, but just want to say we're suffering. We can no longer feed ourselves three times a day for the so-called PDS. We are so fed up. Uh, just imagine I was using one Ghana CD for my refrigerator together with my wall TV for a day, but now I'm using five CDs a day. Um, Russia sends that one from Amasaman. Uh, good morning, Johnny. It is not new for all MPP communicators to use free SHS to answer all questions, even if borders on issues of energy ask you questions. That's smack of gross incompetence. And that is coming from Ishaku 
from Tamale. Uh, good morning to you all. I want our ministers and party representatives to respect our currency. I hate it when they're calling names uh, of uh, everything in dollars. Uh, are we in a dollar country or a CD country? Julius White wants to know from Bono East. Uh, please, Johnny, ask the politicians. Uh, NPP said they stopped doing so and now are blaming NDC for excess power capacity. How did NPP stop doing so? Joe from Borga wants to know that one okay. as well. Thank you. Bana. Thank you very much. Um, it's the, the clock is ticking. Thank so. you very much. I just want to take a, just a minute to deal with a few issues. Now, it's, it's the, within your concerning time. the issue of Valco and the policy to use hydro, if that is to be adhered to strictly, what it will mean is that Ghanaians will have to pay more for the power that they consume. Hydro, particularly hydro which is a kusumbo can produce about two or three cents per kilowatt hour which is way less than what we came to meet which, is, which averages around 14 cents per kilowatt hour mm -hmm. if we take out hydro and dedicate it to solely the production of alcohol it means that the average cost will go up and Ghanaians will have to pay more mm -hmm. for the electricity that they consume mm -hmm. the extension of the car power deal the rationale behind it is very simple when Car power came in and, uh, as an emergency power plant, mm. which was a justification that they used to give such high tariffs for car power. Mm. What we have done is to convert it from an emergency power plant to a traditional power plant and therefore have a basis to reduce their tariffs. Okay. It is the reduction of that tariff that oh, has enabled. Oh. Allow, 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 allow. Dana. Thank you. <laughs> it is the reduction of that tariff that has allowed us to be in this environment in which we are. Mm. Bear in mind the fact that electricity is a very important bedrock in this our country. The industrialization drive that we are seeking to go on cannot succeed if the tariffs of electricity are way too high for our people to afford. And did I hear that the media office is at the Flagstaff House? Mm. It's, did I hear a parliamentarian is say it, that is it, not? it is not? Okay. Mm -hmm. It well, is not. The media it's, office it's, is not. Please, 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 please. The media office, there. please. I'll okay. give you. I'll give it, you. It the, is not. Copy, okay, let's let's I'll give go. you a copy of the <laughs> school letter, the time is and then we can deal it with. It is not. Now dealing with dealing with it is the not, issues but, of, but should the finance with, minister go? Dealing with should the, the finance minister go? I, I I thought you said I had some time. Yes, yeah, so to deal I'm with quickly asking you. So if you allow me to, if you allow me to deal with my face, should the finance minister go? If you allow me to, this will be my second question to you that you have not answered. If you allow me to deal with my issues, you gave me you gave me a total of five minutes. It's not an autopilot conversation. Well, I will have to ask the you finance questions. minister shouldn't go. Can okay. I move on? Muda, Mida, how about Mida? Should Can I move on? I'll address that in the issues that I'm, I'm speaking. DURC so says on? there should be criminal prosecution. Can I move on okay. and then I'll address all these concerns? Let's hear. Thank you very much. Now, when it comes to the issue of transaction advisor and due diligence and whether due diligence was done or otherwise, I'll present to you this document, which is Media News, the December 2015 edition of it. Okay. And if you do me a favor, mm. um, if you can read this headline and then the underlying question. No, I'm portion. not supposed to be reading Okay, that. now I'll show you. Media appoints International <laughs> Finance Corporation yes, as PSP Transaction so Advisor. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> May I finish? Now, it says that as Transaction Advisor, the International Finance Corporation, which is a subsidiary of the World Bank, is expected to, among other things, mm conduct a due diligence of ECG mm. and the PSP transaction. Underline that part. Is MIDA blamable? A transaction advisor, as transaction advisor, IFC is expected to, among other things, conduct a due diligence of the ECG and PSP transaction. Is MIDA blamable? Definitely some of it will have to go to MIDA. And so remember, we remember, 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 no problem, no problem. Uh, uh, so please allow me to finish. When they are now, bar, now, 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 what is clear <laughs> okay. is that Government did not just get up and hand over the assets of ECG to PDS as some would want us to believe. Did government Indeed, get it wrong? If anybody got it wrong, it is the IFC. Per the documents that why, is why, why were some of their conditions the things, president here's the things, out here's the things. Uh, as approved by government parliament. could not have done that mm. without the approval, first of all, of the IFC, okay, and then also of media assuming that it was even government that did that mm. but if you have to follow uh, uh, the compact agreements which they mm. the ndc mm. signed then they know very well that it is media that has the authority to make those decisions they are but trying to accuse government, government right to of now hand over my let's stop this naked attempt mm. to score cheap political is somebody going to lose their the jobs for this? all of this confusion is, is, is somebody going to lose their jobs are you going to allow me to edward bauer edward bauer edward bauer okay 
We got to go. My Nana, time is not even Nana, up. Is, is somebody my, going to lose their is job? Is, oh, you see, is, is well, somebody losing my, a job? My time is not up. But if you allow me, here's the thing. Government has said, but okay. unlike the previous I, I'm, era I'm where... I'm told our time is up. Oh, but this is... This <laughs> Thank you very much. Edward Bauer is, is the member of parliament this for so Bungu constituency. This is Nana so unfair. Damwa, Nana Damwa this speaks so for the energy Nana ministry. This is so Nana, Nana, you don't allow me. I gave you time. You were talking about... Well, and James Kwabula Bonfair, comrade, is the acting general secretary of the Convention People's Party. And